After oiling the bearing, squirt some oil on the race of the carrier bore. Then slide your spindle into the carrier and bolt down the front retainer. Remember to put the split nut and sleeve back inside. When tightening down the Allen bolts, be sure to use a cheater pipe to ensure the proper seating of the front bearing retainer. Now heat up the rear bearing and flinger. After squirting some oil on a bearing race, slide the hot bearing onto the spindle, keeping the heat marks lined up with the keyway on the spindle. After squirting oil on the bearing, then install the hot flinger. Install your rear retainer and bolt it down. Install the key. Install the spindle drive gear back on the spindle drive shaft along with the locking nut and the cotter pin. Then install the spindle gear and the adjusting nut. Put the finger holders back on along with the collets, tubes, and adjusting nuts. Install the spool guard and put your tooling back into the second position. Place your indicator base on the carrier stem and your indicator on the end of the spindle. Adjust your bearing end play using the adjusting nut that holds the gear on and the split nut that holds back the pressure on the rear of the bearing. Set to two thousandths with approximately 200 pounds of push and 200 pounds of pull. Make sure that after you make an adjustment, you smack the spindle with a dead blow hammer on both ends. This will allow the bearing to move and relieve any pressure on it that could make it move later. Remove the spindle speed gear from the spindle drive gear shaft. In order to do so, it will be necessary to first remove the feed change driven and the feed change drive gears.
This will enable you to get to the overlap spindle speed change driven and drive gears. Remove your lock from the main electrical panel box and turn the disconnect on. Start the main motor. The spindles will not turn, but the lube pump will run, and you can check for plugged or misdirected lube lines. With the lube lines in good working order, you can turn the machine off. Lock the power out and put the spindle speed gear back on. If you're running a high RPM job, you may want to run it at a slower speed for a while and gradually step the speed up to your RPM. This will allow your new spindle bearings to be broken in gradually and decrease your chances of having it heat up and seize.